Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Remek. I'm the founder and CEO of Remek Automobili. Uh, can I get my slides, please? Yeah, uh, so um, we as a company, we uh, wanted to change the way people think about electric cars. When you talk about uh, electric cars, something which comes up to your mind probably is something like this, a bo uh, an ugly, boxy thing which can be really usable as a normal car. And since we are based in Croatia, where no car industry exists or very little high technology industry uh, in general, um, the odds of making a great product while combining an electric car with Croatia are not really good. So does any one of you know of a Croatian product? Yeah, very little. <laughs> so um, you probably think of something like this when I say Croatia. This is something we uh, produced 20 years ago while we were still Yugoslavia. So I was crazy enough to try to make uh, the best and fastest electric car on the planet in Croatia. Uh, and that was, I made a decision five years ago. And here you can see uh, how it turned out. So um, my idea was not just to make an electric sports car, but I wanted to make it good on every level. So uh, we didn't just focus on the technology of the propulsion system, but we also um, developed everything from scratch. So the infotainment system, as you can see here, with the displays showing what each motor is doing, what each battery cell is doing and stuff. Uh, we developed every button from scratch, everything, uh, because we wanted to make the next generation of supercars. When you look at modern supercars, you will notice that most of them are um, on the same uh, principle. So they have a central monocoque chassis, a uh, gas engine in the rear, and I just had the idea that this is a uh, too old uh, design, that this has to be changed with the new technology. But when you are making a car like this, it's not just about the design of the car, but also about the production. Since we are a very small company, and the automotive industry is a very capital-intensive industry, we had to develop ways how to design every part and how to produce it in-house, because we just didn't have the money to pay someone else to do it for us. So um, here you could see how we have built the parts, how we have built the tooling for the parts, everything in-house. Uh, so that's something I'm very proud of. And um, the technology of the car is, of course, the most important. And you will see here uh, that we have uh, a four motor system. So every wheel is driven independently. Um, that's, why I, uh, that's why we are able to uh, divide the power to each motor separately. So each uh, wheel gets its dedicated power. And since electric motors are very responsive and very fast, uh, we can do it uh, hundreds of times per second for each motor independently. Um, just to go a little bit back, how it started for me, um, when I was in high school, uh, mechatronics engineering, um, we had to make uh, an exercise. Um, and I had an idea about making a glove which replaces the keyboard and mouse. And it was just meant to be a normal uh, school project. But my professor said that this could be interesting. And he sent me off to uh, some innovation exhibitions. And on the local level, I won. Then I went uh, on the national level, where I won to, which was quite surprising for everyone because I was not a very good student. And then I went to um, international exhibitions, where I won mostly uh, gold medals and first prizes. So um, I had two passions, um, cars and electronics. And I bought this old BMW, which is four years older than myself, um, to race it. And I uh, had it for a few uh, months, and then the gas engine blew up. And that was when I decided to make an electric car out of it. So I combined my two passions, the electronics and the cars. Of course, I started in the garage. Um, I was doing it myself for maybe one or two years. And I was improving the car all the time with the goal to beat gas-powered cars on the racetrack. That was what I did. So uh, this caught the attention of media because it's not really common that a silent electric car beats fire-spitting race cars. And um, that was the trigger for me to not only uh, build a car, um, which was originally a different car, so BMW, uh, obviously, but um, to, to start a car from scratch. Uh, just to explain a little bit about um, 
uh, the comparison with gas cars and electric cars. So when you have a very fast gas-powered car and a city car, when you drive them the same way for the same distance, the sports car will always consume more, always. While for an electric car, the sports car will consume exactly the same amount of energy like the city car when it's driven the same way. Of course, when you drive it faster, the, consum the consumption will uh, also increase. But that's something uh, which is a very good advantage of electric cars, the efficiency. So we can generate the electricity for uh, the energy needed for electric cars in many ways. If it's um, generated by one of these ways, you can see here like um, nuclear, uh, wind, solar, and so on, uh, it is 100% um, emission free. Of course, there are other ways also to create electric energy like coal, which is the worst way you can do it. But still, in this case, the electric car is more energy efficient and more CO2 uh, friendly than uh, most of the gas powered cars. So even in the worst case. Um, usually, uh, when, when you talk about um, the energy efficiency of gas cars, people think about um, and calculate the efficiency from the gas station to the car. But everyone forgets the whole um, process of getting to the point where you can just go to the gas station and fill your car up. So you have to uh, get the crude oil to transport it to a refinery where it's then um, uh, transformed into gas and diesel you can then uh, put into your car. So it's a long way until it gets to the gas station. So that was just to demonstrate the differences between a gas and um, electric car, but we had our focus not just to make an electric car, but to make the fastest sports cars. So to make the next generation of sports cars and not just an electric sports car. When I decided to make the world's first uh, supercar and the fastest electric car, of course, no one believed me. I was just a guy in a garage, and that's why I was quiet about it until I actually made it. Um, Obviously, when we talk about electric cars, Tesla Motors comes up. Uh, they have just received from the government $450 million for the development of their cars. In total, they have approximately $2 billion investment so far. Everything which you will see what I have done uh, was done with 0.1% of uh, the funds they had available. So um, I think the biggest challenge for me was really to make uh, debt with very limited budget in a country where no uh, such industry existed. So the concept one uh, is the world's first supercar uh, with electric powertrain, 1,088 horsepower uh, from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour, 2.8 seconds, and 600 kilometers uh, range on a single charge. Um, but my idea when I started to make it was not just to make a uh, sports car, but it had to be best on on every level. So the technology had to be great. It had to have a lot of innovations in it. Uh, great design, best quality and customer service possible. So it's not just about the technology in the car. Uh, this is how the car looks like under the skin. So you can see the two front motors, the two rear motors and the battery in the middle. So we had the opportunity to start with a blank sheet of paper and to design the car completely different compared to cars which are available today. So all the heavy parts are between the wheels and very low in the chassis, which allows a very good uh, weight distribution and handling of the car. And all the components you see here, except the two white boxes, which are the charges, are uh, developed and produced by us. Uh, we are proving our claims on different ways. We are racing against other cars. But recently, we have broken five world records for the fastest acceler accelerating electric vehicles. And if you consider that big companies like Peugeot uh, and Opel hold those records before us, I think that's uh, quite an achievement we have managed to do in a very short time with a very limited budget. Um, the traction was quite good. So for example, a few weeks ago, we had uh, over two minutes on uh, CNN. But uh, I'm quite satisfied with the global response uh, in all kinds of media. Um, for example, also, we use a lot of uh, social media and um, medias like YouTube. So we have over 1 million hits on YouTube and uh, 10,000 fans on Facebook, which for a car company is quite good, especially since we are a small car company. But we as a company, we do a lot of other stuff, not just the cars. And so we make prototypes for other car companies, and we use the technology we have developed for the cars for a bunch of other stuff. So currently, all our revenues come from these 
engineering services and prototyping services for other companies. So the company now um, generates a lot uh, enough of um, revenue to keep it going by itself. So um, I don't have to invest anymore, and of course I can't. After so many years, I don't have anything left. <laughs> So, um, but the goal is to, in the midterm and in the long term, to become mostly a car company, to get revenues from sales, but to uh, grow also with the engineering and component services for the cars. Our competitors are um, classic uh, supercars like Bugatti and Pagani for this model. Um, and if you consider that we are quite within their performance range and uh, with some new technology and still with the quite good price, I think we can make it on the market and we want to sell 15 cars a year of this model. Our goal is to um, introduce a new model every two or three years, which will be approximately half the price of the previous model. So that way we want to scale up and to grow organically. Uh, so now it's not anymore a garage. This was our old factory. We had, didn't make a new group photo since we moved into this new factory. So now we are 20 people. Here's our engineering and guys, just to show you how it looks in our company. It looks, yeah, our guys are making a bunch of stuff there, batteries and uh, also some new uh, projects like electric bicycles and even wheelchairs. So we, we do really a lot of stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm running out of time, so just uh, skipping some things here. Um, we are now um, sp uh, spinning off some of these things we are doing, like bicycles, batteries and stuff. Uh, I'm still the 100% owner, so if some investor is interested to join us uh, and shares our uh, visions, feel free to contact me. Thank you.